Biden. Remember the spinach scare? What about the one at Taco Bell? Those recent E. coli outbreaks might have you worried about what you're feeding your family. Some say radiation is the answer to all those problems. But is it safe? Two more suspected cases of E. coli contamination. This subject has been in the news a lot recently. It's an E. coli outbreak. The outbreak has spread to at least 19 states as being blamed for one death. Recent reports on foodborne illness in the U.S. have many consumers up in arms about food safety. Fears that some experts say can be prevented. With the use of a treatment called irradiation. If we expose foods to this very high energy source and that causes ionization of DNA. So effectively, we are killing these bacteria by damaging their DNA. Students at Iowa State University, one of the country's two teaching facilities, learn the process. The now just push it all the way up to the stop. In their own treatment center and university labs where bacteria is analyzed. We have two plates showing the bacteria that have uh, resulted after 24 hours of growth. The radiation would have reduced that to non-detectable results. Irradiated foods are available in stores, usually costing a few additional cents. The process is FDA approved and with 5,000 deaths a year attributed to food bacteria, like the E. coli virus, some argue all food should be irradiated. But consumer advocates like DC-based Food and Water Watch say not so fast. We need to be doing a lot more to make sure that we're growing clean food in the first place rather than treating it with these really harsh, dangerous technologies to try to fix it at the end of the line. But proponents like Dennis Olson stand by the technology. There's no question that it is safe. Ultimately, consumers will decide. Not a inference from his today's diet and nutrition editor as well as the director of the weight management center at the university of pittsburgh madeline good morning to you good morning Eric. as we saw in that spot several e coli scares in recent months in this country if a radiation can get rid of the e coli get rid of the problem then why aren't we seeing more products in the stores that have been irradiated because as you, you say irradiated and what what pops into your mind radioactivity it is absolutely untrue food irradiation is another word for cold sterilization. We think, for example, with milk, it's pasteurized and it kills off all the bacteria with heat. We would never think of drinking unpasteurized milk. Similarly, with raw, with raw food, with meats and produce, that cold sterilization, that is food irradiation, just takes energy rays and is exposed to the food and then kills off most of the bacteria. So it's very safe. And I think if it were called cold sterilization, more people would embrace so it. So these waves essentially just go through the pass through the food? Is that how it right, works? Right. It passes or? through the food. Think of this sort of like microwaves, like we have in a microwave oven, but it doesn't cook the food. So it's essentially bad PR then? If they called it cold pasteurization, you're saying people would have no issue with it? Well, here is something that a, a recent Purdue University study showed that if you gave people a short introduction about what this would be doing, to food and how it would, it would protect the food supply, nine out of ten people would decide, okay, I'd really try that. And that's a good thing. There's a lot of misunderstanding. And of course, when one hears about, well, maybe we should just protect the food supply. Well, why don't we just get to the root of this and get rid of all the well, bacteria? Well, that's a good point, though, Madeline. And I, I appreciate that. The issue is, in a perfect world, that would be wonderful. But I think that cold pasteurization, food irradiation, can be a good tool to help keep the food supply safe. It does not replace good manufacturing processes. There are some special Special interest groups who say that sometimes this irradiation can chemically alter food and create things like carcinogens. Now, the FDA and the CDC have said that's not true. The food is safe. Who's right? Who do you believe? Well, you know, we have to go with more than 40 years of scientific data. People worry about these things. The FDA, the CDC, and scientists working in this area, it is absolutely safe. And the, and, and the fear of and, and opinion about this can't really uh, supersede the ability to say we need to keep the food supply safer and try and kill off as much bacteria as possible. Doesn't it with certain foods actually change, though, the texture of the food and possibly the taste of the food? Now, of course, food radiation can't be for everything. We really want to look at, you know, things that, like potatoes and onions and some of the fruits and vegetables, that can have a change in texture and perhaps in taste. And it may not be for some of these things. Certainly for raw meats, poultry, pork, lamb, you know, and you can even purchase some already packaged. And there's a, an international sign for What is the sign? How do you know if your food has been irradiated? Well, there, because there's a sign that is agreed upon that's on the food and I have to tell you we did have a little trouble in sort of the Pennsylvania New York and New Jersey area finding some of this but we did get some examples and hopefully we'll see some more of these foods once people understand this can really help to keep the food supply at this safe. point just so I understand because I don't 
think I've ever run into this symbol in my supermarket. Maybe I just haven't been aware of it, but how much food right now in this country is irradiated? Well, very little, and I believe an estimate is about 1% of the food is irradiated. Now, it is, a, it is approved to be irradiated and then sent to the supermarkets, but the debate really goes on. Will consumers purchase this? The cost issue is not, uh, is not significant. It's just pennies more. But also, there can be a lot of savings in produce if it's used for that because spoiled is less. You can have a longer shelf life, which can be a help and much less food wastage. But bottom line, whether your food is irradiated or not irradiated, you still have to practice uh, healthy preparation at home. Well, just... one, right, once the food gets home, you still have to wash your hands, not mix raw and cook things. It's only going to protect it coming from the, the farm to your house. And then you still have to use safe practices. And the same with restaurants. Okay, irradiation does not equal radioactive. No, it's a safe thing and good to kill bacteria, keep the food supply safe. Madeline Fernstrom is always thank you very, very well. much. Electromagnetic radiation covers a broad spectrum of wavelengths and includes sunlight, which is vital to life on Earth. The waves have different uses according to their energy. Radio waves enable us to communicate and share information. Microwaves cook our food. Infrared radiation warms us. Visible light illuminates our lives and is essential for food production. Ultraviolet radiation gives us suntans and bone strengthening vitamin D. X-rays enable us to diagnose and treat illnesses and to check our luggage. And gamma rays are used to sterilize medical equipment. Irradiation using X-rays and gamma rays can also be used to treat food. By choosing the right wavelength and dosage, these rays can prevent sprouting of vegetables like potatoes, maintain their freshness and taste, and destroy harmful bacteria that could be present in spices, meat or seafood. Also, can rid fresh fruits and vegetables of insects that might otherwise hitchhike, spreading to other regions of the world where they could have devastating effects on the environment and agriculture. Food irradiation involves shining electromagnetic rays or beams of electrons onto food. The energy is transferred at an intensity necessary to give the desired effect. It is a cold process. So spices retain their unique flavors and aromas that would be diminished by heating. It also avoids reliance on chemical methods, such as fumigation or pesticides, to combat bacteria, insects, or other spoilage organisms. In addition, those irradiation beams pass through packaging, so the food remains protected from bacteria or insects after treatment and will remain fresh longer. Food irradiation offers a chemical-free and heat-free approach. It maintains fresh food quality, reduces the risk of foodborne diseases, and prevents the spread of exotic insects through globalized trade.